Steve, we're talking about these retail groups that are uh, they're claiming mass retail theft. The National Retail Federation has since backed off one of their statements where they were s- sort of confusing the total number of loss versus the, the amount of loss uh, specific to threat. So in response, it seems this zeitgeist of fear that everything's being stolen, we're locking everything up. And I find that to be super annoying. And I ask, is this the new normal? Hmm. Are is this what is is my underwear forever going to be locked up, Steve? Your underwear in particular? I think maybe it'd be a good <laughs> idea. I don't know. Um, good plan, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I think it's funny to think about which things are locked up. Um, Go on. I love this angle. Printer cartridges, uh-huh. for example. I know those are expensive. Yeah. But you're locking those up, so I have to go find someone. And as we've seen, I mean, this is not recovered from the pandemic. How many stores do not have enough employees? So let's say I need to find something that's locked up, and it's not something I'm going to make meth out of. Note to self, I don't make meth. But just in terms of those particular things, um, I mean, there, there's a little it's different. Funny name. how he was very specific <laughs> about that, right, Pablo? <laughs> like, did you notice he's like, "Hey, I don't make meth." Oh, oh, did I, did I stress the? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just note, I don't make <laughs> meth. Oh, so you're saying I did, I did I put it on make or meth? I don't make meth. Go on. Okay. Uh-huh. So when it comes to <laughs> make meth, good for you. <laughs> so there are different you're ways. You're fitting of, in fine, Steve. You. Well done. <laughs> so locking up underwear, locking up other things, there, I think it's also going to make it harder for the consumer to experience, the consumer, to actually experience this. So therefore, yeah. they're not going to, they're not going to care. I'm going to go back to my theory. They're not going to care as much when the stores go away. Because going to the store is not the experience they expected to take the kid along. What's the you NPR know? word for that? Cumbersome? Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. How many syllables? A cumbersome experience. Yes. It has to be minimum three, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. 25 yeah, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So all I'm saying, Chris, is that anything that makes it harder for the consumer to do something helps Jeff Bezos, whether people actually want to help him or not. That's yeah. Because it's like, wait a second, I can get this in four hours from now, don't need to use any gas. Don't need to have my kids who may not be in the mood to go somewhere. Don't, don't have, have to, to find some pimple faced weirdo who's taking this job because his parents telling me he has to work somewhere yeah. to try to unlock my underwear. That's it. And it's also, let's face it, it's a little embarrassing to have some of those things unlocked. Yeah. But when we're such a consumer driven society, I mean, how many times do we hear when the economy's up or down? It's because, oh, it's because people didn't buy enough. What's consumer confidence? So sure. why would you want to have something that might reduce consumer confidence by saying, hey, maybe that store's not safe. You don't want to go there. Yeah, the macroeconomic viewpoint is that. I think of the, the, the microeconomics as well. And, boy, you're just like, I'm trying to elevate this conversation. We're going to have to get, we're going to have to dummy you down. It's a Friday Don't afternoon. try to lift, we're yeah, going to dummy well. you down. Don't try to bring me back up here, pal. <laughs> uh, but in marketing, we would call it lubricating the sale, right? You want to make it as easy as possible to buy something. My wife signed up for a, a Sam's Club membership uh, last year. She got it for like, I don't know, five bucks or something like that. Yeah. And at Sam's Club, we could go through, and I saw somebody doing this at the Safeway near my house now. You can just, you can scan the items as you put them in your cart. Boop. It's in my cart. Boop. And then when I'm ready to check out, I check out on my app. It's done. I go to the, the the person at the front who's checking my receipt. They go, yep, you checked out. You've got this item and that item and that item. I'm out the door. Okay. That does sound easier. It does until you actually start doing it and you realize you're not accustomed to scanning things as you put them in your cart. So you put things in and you go, oh, did I scan that already? Did I, did I do this one? How many times do we just grab something off the shelf, we throw it in the cart, and we keep moving? <laughs> oh, I need Fruit Loops. In the cart we go and off, off down the aisle we, we, we head. So I, I, I think that locking some things up is probably here to stay. And the, the, the thing that comes to my mind is razors. Razors have gotten so crazy expensive. And let's face it, they're easy to steal. Yeah. Right? They're small. Absolutely. Slide them right in the pocket. Nobody notices. I'm out the door. So I feel like those are going to stay locked up. But I do think we've, we've I don't know, have we hit peak lockup? Yeah, but that's the kind of theft you're talking about. Someone can stick it in jeans pocket, jacket, whatever. Right. You're not talking about pallets of... Things iPads that, and stuff. Yeah, right? things yeah. That, that would have been coming off the truck. Yeah. Or, you know, you, you spent a lot of time in Southern California. You've got, what, what was it, the Long Beach uh, dock where everything was left because of the supply chain issue? Sure, or the people robbing the trains that were going through. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That's a little different concept to me. Sure. I, I, uh... that, that's not organized retail theft, right. though. That's just that's, true. Good point. that's other stuff, right? So as we talk about the organized retail theft, I'm, I'm thinking, we had a story earlier this week where we discussed the self-checkouts. And self-checkouts, I know Bruce loves the self-checkouts. You you did a show with Bruce earlier this week. Did you guys talk self-checkouts on your show? We sure did. That was it. He loves those things, yeah. right? 
I'm generally a fan, uh, mostly because I don't like waiting in line, right? I don't like doing my own work because it's not like I'm saving any money, right? The prices haven't come down while I'm becoming a cashier, but I don't like waiting in line. And I certainly don't like striking up a conversation with whom I have no common ground. 100% with you on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm there. But what they're finding is, they go, oh, we have to take these out now. Walmart says, it's a customer service issue. Then they say, oh, no, it's because too many people are stealing things. It's probably in the middle. What happens to customer service? To your point about yeah. the finding the kid to, to unlock my under drawers. Yeah. Like, if you're not lubricating the sale. You're making it tougher for me to purchase things. Yeah, so... You're making all these good points, and I'm going to take us yeah. off for like a seven second, and you're going to go, see, that didn't help us. So was leaving Target last night, mm-hmm. have my little bags coming out, and the person in front of me goes through the double doors where you've got the security thing set up. Beep, beep, beep. She just keeps on going. Yeah. It's probable that there was some sort of mess up, and she actually paid for her items. But, yeah, yeah. But if she didn't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the type, just to let you know, Chris, I'm a little neurotic. You I'm stop, the, you look around. I'll be like, uh, I know I paid for these, but uh, do you guys want to check my bags? Yeah, I do the same Just thing. kept going. So, yeah. yeah. And, retail And, and we all yeah. see that happen all the time, <laughs> yeah. right? Have a, it's like, what's the, it's sort yeah. of like hearing a car alarm right. nowadays. So what was actually stolen and what wasn't, I really have no, no idea, idea at this point. No idea. So now that you know the numbers around retail crime, right, we know that retail crime is actually down, uh, even though the politicians and the social media will tell you it's terrible. Who started this whole thing? All right, TikTok, right? Or maybe even as that old saying goes, as goes California, so goes the rest of the U.S. Is that an old saying? Steve, my mom used to say it, and she's old, so I'm going to say it's an old saying. Is I that think a, it's is a that great a thing? saying, yeah. Okay, absolutely. very good. Thanks for watching the Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.